Hey guys, um, so for this lesson we're going to look at properties of exponential functions. So we're going to build off of lesson 7-1 and 7-2 and um, talk still about parent function and we're talking about some transformations. So for objective questions, um, we're going to be answering the question what is E and how does it relate to exponential models? And then for our objectives, we're going to explore the properties of functions in the form y equals ab raised to the power of x and graph exponential functions that have base e. So families of exponential functions. So um, we've talked about our parent function. We said it was y equals ab to the x, but the most parent of function is just b to the x. So y equals b to the x times a is just um, a stretch or a compression. Oh, there we go. So if it's greater than 1, it's a stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, it's a compression. And if it's less than 0, that means it's negative. It's going to be re a reflection across the x-axis. So instead of growth going up, um, decay is going to be going down. Uh, translations, we have horizontal, that's your h, and vertical is your k. So just like when we talked about other um, families of functions, we have h and k. And you can see x and h are still related, and then k is over there kind of on its own. So the h is going to move it left and right, opposite, just like we talked about before, k is going to move it up and down. Uh, so if we put all the transformations together, we get y equals a times b raised to the x minus h plus k. Alright, so we're going to start by graphing. How does the graph of y equals negative one-third times three to the x compare to the parent function? Well, what would our parent function be in this case? Well, our parent function itself, oops, is y equals three raised to the power of x. Okay, so what's the difference between this function and this function? Well, we have this negative one-third here. So since it's negative, the negative means it's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. And then what is that one-third going to do? Well, it's between 0 and 1, so that's going to be a compression by a factor of one-third. Make sense? Pretty easy. <clears throat> All right, so let's um, translate these. How do the graph of each function compare to the graph of the parent function? So y equals 2 raised to the x minus 4. Okay, what is our parent function? Well, our parent function in this case would be y equals 2 to the x power. What's the difference between these two? The minus 4. Okay, since it's connected with the x, this is a horizontal translation. Horizontal. And that means moving left and right. Since it's a minus 4, remember these are opposites, it's actually going to go right 4. Pretty simple. <clears throat> okay, and we can make a table of values. Um, you can graph both of these on your calculator. Make sure you use um, parentheses around your exponent to say that the whole thing is x minus 4. All right, now we have e to the x power. So natural base exponents are um, exponential functions that have base e. So instead of having a number, we have e. e is kind of like pi. So pi is a number, 3.1415, you know, all those things. e is kind of the same way. So go ahead and type e into your calculator and just hit enter and see what it says. Okay, go ahead and pause because I want you to do it yourself. I know you can. It's not that hard. Just put e into your calculator. Find out what it is. Okay, so you should put E into your calculator and hit enter. <clears throat> the decimal approximation for E is 2.718281828459045236028747135266, etc., etc., etc. And so just like pi, it's a non-rational, non-ending number. Okay, so how can you evaluate um, using your graphing calculator? Okay, so go ahead. You should have found e. Put e raised to the third power. Just hit enter. Um, so there's e to the x key, or you can also graph. So if you plug in e to the x and um, use 3 as your x, then it should give you an answer. When you graph it, um, if you want to find y equals e to the x power, just go ahead um, once you have graphed it. So graph it in your y1, graph it, and then hit 3 and then um, it'll give you 
like x equals 3, and it'll tell you what the value is. You can also, once you've graphed it, go into your tables, go to x, and see what it says for y. Okay, so um, go ahead and do e to the third power, and then e to the eighth power. See what you get? I'll tell you in just a sec. For e to the third, you should have gotten 20.0855. That's just kind of where I rounded it to. And e to the eighth is just over 2,980. It's like 0.97589 something or other. It's very close. All right, and continuously, continuously compounded interest. We're going to take these um, things that we've learned and apply them to a problem. So the formula for continuously compounded interest uses the number e. So what it means to be continuously compounded is um, sometimes things are um, in banking. It's compounded annually or monthly or quarterly. That just means um, what they're doing is they're taking the interest that you've earned and then applying that as your principal to earn interest on interest. Um, <clears throat> some accounts are not compounded at all, but compounded continuously means, you know, every time that money is added, like daily or moment by moment, um, then your money is compounded. So everything that you um, put in plus the interest that you earned is then calculated to find your new interest amount. So here's the um, formula that we use, A of T that means our um, value after a certain period of time is P, your principal amount, times E raised to the power of rate times time. Uh, here's all those things that I just told you. For rate, um, we're talking about annual rate, and we write it as a decimal, not as a percent. And T is always your time in years. <clears throat> so make sure that you're looking at time in years for this one. All right. So suppose you won a contest that at the start of fifth grade that deposited $3,000 in an account that pays 5% annual interest compounded continuously. How much will you have in the account when you enter high school four years later? Okay, so we're looking at um, using our equation. A of T equals P times E raised to the RT. You may have um, heard this as A equals PERT. That's how I learned it. Um, that's what my teacher said anyway. So your principal is how much you invested initially. Well, that's $3,000. Your rate is, your annual rate, 5% written as a decimal. So we write that as 0 0.05. And then your time is in years. So we have four years. So you just go ahead and put those things in. 3,000 times E raised to the 0 0.05 times 4. Okay, so then you just have to... Um, follow your order of operations. We're going to do our exponents first, so we need to multiply what's 0 0.05 times 4. Well, 5 times 4 is 20, so we have 3,000 times e to the 0.2, or 0.20. So then evaluate e to the 0.2 power, and then multiply that times 3,000. So you should have, after four years, $3,664. Now, remember when we did the 5% interest rate um, yesterday? This is a much better deal because um, your compounded, even though it's the same percentage, compounded continuously means like moment by moment. It's calculating and building interest on interest, whereas before, your interest wasn't really included. All right. And we're done. So I want you to go ahead and um, write down these transformations from the parent functions. So just tell me what each one is going to do. And then um, I want you to answer this question. Is y equals e to the x plus 7 a natural base exponential function? You're going to work on these with your partner. Um, check your answers together when you get to class tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to do your Lesson 7-2 homework and to watch the 7-3 video for the next class. Have a great night, guys.